Charlie Bratz, Chapter 14. Hurry, Charlotte, heard Rosie yell from the front hall that Saturday afternoon. Their parents had gone shopping for patio furniture for the backyard, leaving Charlotte and Tom in charge, and the siblings were heading to the haunted house. Coming, Charlotte called from the bathroom where she was applying sunscreen. She'd forgotten it the other day and her cheeks were still red and peeling, a condition she did not need to make even worse. She was not looking for more reasons to stand out at Fort Patrick Middle School. Being Sergeant Whitby's sister all week had been more than enough. We're going to be late, Rosie said. She ran into the closet, grabbed some supplies, then raced out of the room. And I don't know where I was. That's why we use our finger to see where we are. Coming, Charlotte said, okay, she stopped suddenly when she saw her sister and bur burst into laughter. Rosie, you don't need your night vision goggles. It's bright sun out there. Rosie frowned, not an easy feat in the bulky goggles. We might need them if it's dark in the house, she explained. She has a point, Tom said, coming down the stairs. Plus, they look cool. Rosie smirked at her sister. Charlotte held up her hands. Fine, whatever, she said. She just hoped they wouldn't run into Sophia or Mari on their way to the house. Rosie was not looking so darling right now, and Charlotte did not need them to see anyone else in her family being weird. Because, of course, that's what her new friends thought about her brother. That he was a weirdo. Charlotte was unlucky enough to be related to. It was an attitude that grated on Charlotte, but also one she had she hadn't corrected. Yet she kept promising herself she'd tell her friends how close she was to her brother, but really it would be so much easier to do after they made the video that proved Tom was brave. So today they'd get the video. Monday they'd show it around, and by lunch no one would even remember Brave Tom had once been Sergeant Wimpy. Do you have your phone? She asked Tom. Check, Tom said, holding up his phone. All charged and ready. Good, and mine is too, Charlotte said. So let's get going and make this video. Finally, Rosie said. And while we bike over, stay on the lookout for Buddy because he's still missing Pepper too. Charlotte tried not to roll her eyes. Okay, but we're going straight there. Getting the footage of Tom going into the haunted house is top priority. Roger that, Rosie agreed. Charlotte was glad Rosie got, got how important this was, and hopefully she would forget about the dogs once they started a real investigation. The Baileys headed out into the sunny afternoon. It was slightly cooler than it had been earlier in the week, with a soft breeze that felt good on Charlotte's cheeks as they grabbed their bikes from the garage. So what do you think we'll find there, Tom asked, as they pedaled down Bingham Road. Maybe those soldiers that got experimented on turned into zombies, Charlotte said, knowing Tom liked zombie convicts. Tom probably thought she was being extra nice because she felt bad kids were mocking him so relentlessly. And of course it was true. That had infuriated Charlotte. But underneath her righteous anger, was the slippery guilt that made Charlotte squirmy every day she remembered how she had yelled at her brother. She had been upset at the secret he'd kept from her, but worse, she'd also been embarrassed by him. And if she was completely honest with herself, she still kind of was. It was a wretched feeling that she desperately wanted to be rid of. In fact, Charlotte knew it was possible that she cared even more about being getting this video than Tom did. She slowed her bike to a stop at the central plaza while a platoon marched past in smart formation. I thought the soldiers turned into ghosts that haunt the building, Rosie said, not zombies. She had somehow managed to wedge her bike helmet over the goggles and she looked like a beetle. It could be either, Charlotte said, watching how perfectly each sol soldier marched exactly in step with the person in front of them. They made it look easy, but Charlotte's class had tried it in gym and it was actually quite hard. Or both, added. Tom added uneasily as the platoon, the platoon passed and they began to ride again. 
There were almost no cars on Gettysburg Drive, and Charlotte sped up. Her siblings right behind her as they neared Crimson Drive. Once they turned onto the quiet street, Tom took the lead so that he could show them the nearly hidden alley. Moments later, the three of them came to a stop in front of the wooden building. It was set back from the road with uneven patches in the lawn. Charlotte noticed ruts in the driveway that seemed fresh, but the house had an abandoned feel to it, like nothing human had been there in a long time. It's creepy, she said quietly to her siblings. She still wasn't sure if she believed in ghosts, but if she did, they would definitely live in a place like this. Let's go inside, Rosie said in her normal voice, kicking the stand on her bike and starting toward the porch. Wait, not too fast, Tom said, his eyes darting nervously at the wooded area behind the house. Charlotte understood his hesitation. The way the shadows fell over the house, making it seem like like twilight, even in the light of day, was unsettling. And who knew what might be lurking in the woods? But they'd come to conquer the haunted house, not just stare at it. Don't worry, it'll be fine, she said. And we all know the plan, right? She was looking at Rosie as she spoke. Yes, Rosie said, nodding and then readjusting her goggles when they slid, a, slid down a bit. Tom goes first and you video him pretending to be brave. Charlotte saw Tom open his mouth to protest, so she spoke up quickly. Right, and make sure not to get too close to Tom so it looks like he's alone there. Roger that, Rosie said. They stowed their bikes behind a bush and Rosie led the way to the porch. Charlotte filmed Tom walking up the steps and trying the front door. He pulled hard, but it didn't give. Locked. Not a surprise. Tom peered in the side window. Charlotte zoomed in over his shoulder, excited to see what alarming things might be inside. But the entryway was just dark and empty. Can we break in now? Rosie asked. Um, let's look at the window first, Charlotte said, clicking off the video. It would be better to see what was inside before bursting in, especially if they didn't want Tom screeching. Boring, Rosie complained, tugging to see if the window was unlocked. Tom cleared his throat. Remember, Mom says you never go into an enemy building blind. You have to scope out what's inside first to avoid a surprise ambush. Right, Rosie said, letting go of the windowsill and nodding vigorously. Can I be first to scope it out or does Tom go first? You go, Charlotte. And you go, Charlotte and Tom said, nearly nearly in unison. Obviously, having fearless Rosie check things out first made sense. Charlotte decided that they'd do the video of Tom when they knew what the situation was inside, instead of filming him getting spooked by something unexpected. Rosie ran over to the bay window at the front of the house and pressed her face, goggles and all, against the glass. It's just desks and chairs, she announced. Charlotte approached and looked closely, but all she saw was a room full of dusty old office furniture. No sign of ghosts anywhere. Though in all fairness, Charlotte wasn't sure what kind of signs ghosts left. The Baileys walked carefully around the house, looking in all the windows on the first floor. Charlotte noticed Rosie tugging surreptitiously on them, but they were either locked or wedged shut from lack of use. The rooms bathed in shadow were mostly empty, save for furniture and a few cobwebs. If there are ghosts or zombies, they're probably in the attic, Tom said. That's true, Charlotte said, tilting her head to peer up. I wish we could look in the windows of the second floor. Well, maybe we can. Maybe we could get Dad's ladder, Rosie suggested, her eyes lighting up. That wouldn't exactly be subtle. Charlotte pointed out. Rosie's mouth pinched up. Remember, we want to be stealth ninjas, Tom said. Does that mean it's time to break in very quietly, Rosie asked. Charlotte couldn't help laughing at that, though Rosie did have a point. Yeah, I think it is, she said. Going in blind would not be ideal, of course, but so far all they had was a video of Tom walking onto a porch, and that was hardly going to help him. They needed to get inside and start exploring. 
Rosie clapped in glee, but Tom held up a hand. We still haven't looked in the basement, he pointed out. We should do that first. Just then, a crow flew overhead, its black feathers rustling as it swooped low and let out a mournful caw before landing on a low branch on the tree above them. Charlotte drew in a breath. There was something decidedly unsettling about the way it was staring down at them. Tom was standing very still beside her, clearly spooked. His gaze focused on the large bird. But Rosie, who hadn't seemed to even notice the crow, bounced over to the basement window next to the front porch. Charlotte grabbed Tom's arm to follow. They had to scramble through a big leafy bush, ducking to avoid getting hit in the face by the branches in order to get to the small window. The dirt was moist under Charlotte's knees as she crouched down and peered in. And then she gasped. Uh, are those cages? Tom whispered incredulously beside her. I think so, Charlotte whispered, shifting so she could get a better look. They were cages. Four of them in a row, all about the same, all about the same size, the size of a refrigerator. It's a big cage. Leather straps hung from a hook on the wall behind them. And look there on the table, Rosie said, her voice hushed for the first time. On the white table near the cages was a tray of sharp, glistening syringes, a carton of locks, a case of sinister looking hooked and jagged metal tools, and a pile of very strange plastic packages. Is that, Charlotte asked, pressing her nose against the window as she tried to make it out more clearly. I think it's flesh, Tom said quietly. Charlotte's hands were shaking, but she managed to press record on her phone and held it to the window. Do ghosts eat meat? Rosie whispered, or zombies? I don't, Charlotte began, but stopped short as she was interrupted by a sound from inside the basement, low and guttural. Tom let out the screech of doom. Rosie shouted, and Charlotte leaped up so fast she nearly fell over backwards into the bush. The sound came again, this time more of a growl, deep and threatening. What was that? Rosie asked in a breathless voice. Who cares, Tom said, his face pale. Let's get out of here. Charlotte had to admit she agreed, but they couldn't flee. Not when they had zero good, good video footage. Just do something first, she hissed, holding up the phone to capture Tom. Pose like you're about to open the window and look brave. Unfortunately, Tom looked completely terrified, kind of how Charlotte was feeling. She was about to tell him to fake it so they could leave this creepy place once and for all, but then they heard another sound, this one behind them. It was footsteps coming up the path, though their view of whatever was walking toward them was blocked by the bush. Charlotte felt Tom's fingers digging into her arm, and even Rosie was silent. Not that Charlotte could hear much of anything beside the footfalls coming closer and the pounding of her heart. The steps came to a halt right at the bush. Charlotte held her breath and closed her eyes, waiting for hands or claws or something. Even worse, to reach into the shrub and grab them. But then she heard a gravely voice speak, begin to speak. Yeah, I'm at the site. A man said, then paused for a moment. No, no one followed me. I was careful, just like we discussed. Charlotte leaned forward as silently as she could, giving Tom a quick look when he tried to stop her. She held her breath again so as not to make even a single leaf on the bush flutter and looked out. There on the path stood a man talking on a cell phone. He appeared completely unaware of the three billies hidden behind the bush. Yes, he's locked up in there now, the man went on. I'll just make sure everything's secure before I leave and then come back tomorrow to finish up. With that, he stuffed the phone back in his pocket and headed to the front door. He pulled out a set of keys and after several false tries, managed to let himself inside and close the door, the door firmly behind him. Rosie turned to her siblings. I don't think that man is military, she whispered. Charlotte had noticed that too. The man was wearing jeans and an odd brown jacket that seemed to be padded. His shoulders sloped 
His hair was shaggy, and Charlotte was fairly certain she'd seen stubble along his jawline. Military men and women walked tall, wore uniforms on duty, had neat haircuts, and were never, ever unshaven. So clearly this man was not a soldier. You're right, she said. Never mind that, Tom whispered tensely. The real question is, how are we getting out of here? We can't go now. It's time to be spies, Rosie cried, just a little bit too loudly. He unlocked the door. Maybe we can sneak in behind him. Is someone out there? The man called from inside the house. Tom was up and running, pulling Rosie with him, Charlotte right behind. They raced to their bikes and climbed on, just as they heard the front door open. Who's out there? The man yelled. But the Baileys were gone, leaving only a trail of dust in their wake as they flew back up the alley along Crimson Drive and down Gettysburg Drive, not stopping to breathe until they reached the safety of their house on Bingham Place. And that is the end of chapter 14. This is getting pretty interesting. Um, happy reading for now, and I'll see you on chapter 15.